All right, guys. Uh, let me do this here. And there is the image. So let's uh, let's go. Uh, the idea is to build this base here, right? It has ten traps total. Um, nine traps that deal damage and one trap that, well, eight traps that deal damage and two traps that do not. Um, it has four or five. Um, yeah, it has five uh, foundations, one stair, um, four uh Columns, um, four beams, uh, four half floors, one floor, and that's it. Um, I have it replicated multiple times, and I have it using those um, um, battery eliminator things. Uh, and I have a lot of things uh, uh, on it, uh, such as um, a flamethrower aiming at it, but none of this stuff is really needed now i have the material for these for the base um on chests so we can go over it i had to the count might be wrong in particular the first one i think it's off by two uh vine but uh let's uh let's go over it so for the first one, and I have some vinyl on me. I do not want to. I want my inventory clear for this. So I apologize for the delay. So let's um, drop everything that is a build material. And that's it. So I have five chests. Um, the first chest is about foundations, right? So for foundations, and this goes all the way to steel. So for the steel material, uh, which is a lot of nails, some rebar, some... Uh, um, some rebar and some nails. Well, the rebars and the nails. Like these two, you can exclude um, and probably a lot of nails. So 13 cement, 15 rope, 55 nails, 31 rebar, 23 iron plates, 18 trimmed stones, 23 bricks, 7 wood planks, 15 lumber, 6 log, 8 vine. Which I think is actually 6 vine, but uh, yeah, well. Now, this is just a guide for where I want the first base to be. It's not part of the base. So I'm going to place this here and snap and have it here. Now, now I need to break this foundation here. Because I'm going to have a trap here. Break the foundation, right? So two foundations uh, off by uh, with a one foundation space between them. Then we have one foundation on the diagonal, and then comes back from the diagonal, two more foundations. All right. Now up here, I'm gonna have beams. Uh, it's got facing this way uh, let's see if it's uh, yeah that's correct so one two and then same thing on the other side one two uh, the beans are aligned that's fine next i'm gonna have a floor to help place columns so i'm gonna place the floor here uh, the floor is perfectly aligned 
I'm going to come back and build columns. So one column here, one column here. I'm going to destroy this thing here. And notice that I get all materials back when I destroy stuff. At early game, you're not going to get materials back when you destroy stuff. So you will have to consider uh, um, the loss of materials you will have on this thing here, which is not particularly great. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not a particularly uh, big loss of materials, and it's all wood. Now, you will not be able to make this base on the first um, right at start. Some materials are very expensive, but you can do it by parts and still uh, reap most of the benefits here. So after we place that floor there in the middle, we are going to go for the half floors. And we're going to have a half floor here and a half floor here. And then the same thing on the other side. All right. And finally, we are going to have stairs here. And th this next thing is really not necessary, but it helps prevent zombies from getting stuck underneath the stairs and start hitting the stairs or the foundation just because they cannot get out of there. All right, so and this is the path the zombies are going to take. Right? We're going to stay here. Ah. Now, I can upgrade everything here. Uh, material I have left here. Right? Concrete, uh, rebars, bricks, iron plates. The two vine, I think it's... Uh, uh, unnecessary. Let's go over the first layer of upgrades. This first layer is the one you really need for... Um, you have to have this first layer complete in the first five days. Because on day six, the horde that starts on day six are gonna have, is going to have uh, zombies that set things on fire. Okay, so it needs to be stone by the start of day six. And the game starts on day zero at 14, uh, 14 p.m. Uh, that's uh, 14, 1400 or 2 p.m. on day zero, right? And from day zero to day five, you have time to uh, upgrade this until it gets to stone. And stone doesn't catch fire, so you'll be good to go at this point. Now, I am on day 28, and despite the fact that I have multiple of these bases, and I have like extra stuff, like flamethrowers, etc., the truth is, I don't need them. Uh, they ensure that if I lose one of these paths, the zombies will still come, but I don't need them. Fact is, a single one of these bases can handle the whole hard night by itself. All right, so everything is upgraded to, to stone, and this is what you need at the start of day six. So you have to do it from day zero to day five. And I have left 42 nails, 31 rebar, 23 iron plates. And this is, yeah, this was too much. Now, notice that I used only 13 nails to make this thing here, right? So I only use 13 nails. The other nails are only for the iron upgrade. I'm going to go over that now. And this is an upgrade that... It can wait. It can wait, right? You will know that you need this upgrade when you go check how the, your base is faring afterwards, uh, after Horde Night, and things are like go from 100% to 50% in a, in a day. 
then you know you, you need a, an upgrade. But as soon as you can do this upgrade, go ahead and do it. There is no point in delaying this. And because iron is more resistant to explosion, the base is going to take less damage. So it's not just that it has more hit points. The base is going to take less damage. And then we go over the stuff on top. And these beams in particular, they are difficult to... Oh, okay, I'm missing iron plates. I'm missing six iron plates. Hmm. I don't know how that happened. Okay, so I do have enough nails. I do have enough rebars. I'm missing six iron plates. So, however many iron plates there were at the beginning, I was six short. Let's go here. Um, I'm gonna actually drop these two. Um, yeah. Hmm. I know I messed up some numbers because I forgot to save the game and I just looked over the uh, uh, some some screenshots from the recording and some numbers were difficult to, to read so okay now uh, nothing left of course the two things here is uh, I had too much of and then the other two uh, two vines I had more uh, too much of and six steel plates I have uh, short of. Now, next, these are the physical traps. Uh, well, not physical traps. These are the, uh, these are the non-electrical traps. Okay. Now, there is one trap that is electrical and you can delay the trap. Uh, these are the traps that are going to handle a uh, uh, they can handle everything up to date and easily. So it's nine trap machines, nine traps, nine iron ingots, then 27 nails, that's three times as much, three nails on average per trap, 54 ropes, so six uh, ropes on average per trap, 30 planks and 25 lumber. You know, again, I might be off here, um, it happens. Uh, I hope I'm not. So let's go over the traps. We have first uh, traps here. Um, they are all millet traps, right? Well, not all millet traps. There are two of these traps that are um, path controlling pet traps. Uh, and then eight millet traps. We're going to start with the spiked floors and we're going to have three of them. So one of them here one of them here and one of them here okay now the next one i want to place down are the shredders and these traps cannot be placed um snapping you have to unlock the snap and if they do need to have enough distance between them um They do need to have enough distance between them for the zombies to pass through. So if you make it them too close to each other, you're going to have trouble. So place it about here. And then about here. And here the V support on the trap is basically uh, at the start of the, the wood, uh, the horizontal wood on the other side. Okay. Uh, this is not particularly good. It's badly placed on the side. Um, I'm gonna grab this thing back. But um, I this is this is too much actually. Um, it it will work the way I have 
place it. Okay. Yeah, and now this one is too high, but that's fine. Okay. And you can see the path that are going to go here. Um, do not place walls. Uh, some zombies will come from this path. It's fine. There are not many of them are going to make it. I think this trap actually should have been a little bit further in that direction. But never mind that. Uh, the next trap I like to place, because it's difficult to place before the other two traps, and this is snapping, is the pendulum. Okay? So the pendulum is going to go here. And these pillars are uh, theoretically supporting the pendulum. But maybe they are not. Maybe the pendulum is just on the floors here. But I think you do need the pillars. Okay. So the pendulum is there. And you see the, the, um, the ball has to be on the side. Because when it hits zombies, it's going to throw them off. All right. Um, we have just uh, the, the how things here. And for a good reason, because the next trap and the last uh, damage dealing trap you're going to place is the pusher. Uh, and the pusher is going to come here. All right? So this is why you have a health path here, because the pusher is going to move them all the way here. Some zombies will resist the pusher and actually manage to get here and cross over, and then they're going to get hit again. Okay? Now, there is going to be a trap there that is electrical, so we're not going to place it now. We're going to go here. Uh, we're going to place the trap door. Uh, just place the trap door there, and they're going to stay here. So if any zombie manages to survive the shredders, to not be pushed off by the pusher, to not be killed or uh, pushed off by the uh, pendulum, to not be pushed off by the pusher again, it will fall when this thing opens underneath their feet. So you're going to stay here. Um, this is not a place that is uh, it's going to last uh, for very long because zombies can easily jump here uh, before day 10. And there is uh, zombies like the, the, the butcher guy, the hunter. You do not want to be here. So you would want to, like go from here elsewhere but that can wait that can wait after the after you you have the, this is enough for day one for day zero well it's actually day one start on day zero so first hard night on day one this is fine day two this is fine day three this is fine um maybe day four not sure okay and we do have materials left huh what am I missing? It's nine traps. Oh yes, oh yes. There is one trap, and this this not uh, it's a um, damage dealing trap, and this will will not snap. Well, it, maybe it's gonna snap, but it's probably not. So I'm gonna place this guy here, right? Because some zombies drop here and start hitting this part of the base, and if you're looking at this side of the base, you don't have an angle on them. So this hits them here and prevents them from staying there indefinitely. All right, nine traps placed. And I do have one rope and six wooden planks left. That's curious. We continue to be off by a little bit. Six planks, one rope. Okay, now next, we you see we had a trap machine here, so this is what you need to upgrade the traps to all traps to electricity and place the electrical trap. Uh, this is much harder to get to, so you're going to need 10 motors, 10 plugs, 100 rope, um, 154 nails. 52 rebar, 55 iron plates, two tapes, 
two transistors and one trap machine. So, um, let's actually uh, come back here, take all. And I'm going to start by placing the last trap here. And do not think you can do that jump. Uh, I could do that jump because I maxed out on all, all skills. So it's a trap of this type and it's the springboard trap. Okay. Let's snap it there and place it there. So they're coming through here and then this thing pushes them here. So it doesn't do damage, but when they get pushed here, they start taking damage. Not to mention they lost the path. All right, now let's upgrade everything. Uh, notice that a lot of these traps are traps the game asks you to craft. It asks you to craft and upgrade the pusher. Um, it asks you to craft the pendulum. I think it asks you to craft the spiked floor, not sure. It does ask you to craft the cutter. So you actually get a lot of... Um, you get to use a lot of the traps the game asks you to craft. Uh, there, upgrade. And upgrade. I'm off by one nail. 100. So it was 155 nails. I'm off by one. Not 154 nails, 155 nails. I'm off by one nail. Well, I apologize for these uh, inaccuracies. Upgrade. All right, use all the materials here. Now, you may think that you may think that just um, that an electric trap will not work without electricity. That's not true. It works, and in fact, it takes. Um, it has twice as many charges as the non-electrical traps that they have been upgraded from. Okay, uh, stay here a little bit more. You can see how this is supposed to work, right? All right. Uh, last, uh, that one is a spitter. So let's try avoid getting spitted on. Let's uh, hide here. There. Oh, see, one of them get, got to the pusher. So the pusher unupgraded has 30 charges. This has 60. Now reload uses cells, which is way more expensive than the um, the sticks that you use to reload. Is that a stick or vine? I don't remember. But it's more expensive, but it has twice as many charges. So the Shredders has 200 instead of 100. Uh, the Spiked Floors, same thing. The, where, where, where am I? Here, this guy is going to have 60 instead of 30. Oh, no one got there, so you, you don't even see it. Okay. So that's it. Now... You will want to upgrade, or you will see this modified, you want to place things here. And the, the best uh, uh, modifiers you can place, they are the sting for almost every trap. Uh, this one, like these, uh, only the damage dealing traps, uh, either melee or ranged have them. Uh, this thing here do not have the these modifiers. I think only the ones that can be upgraded. I think they need any, any and it's damage dealing. Anyway, you place the sting on 
every one of these straps, including the cutter down there, don't forget it, except this one. This one, you, you place the one that does a percentage of uh, extra damage. Uh, and that's the best, um, that's how you get most bang for your buck. Anyway, I wasn't supposed to get those, but uh, no. let's move them away. Okay, so there is all the traps and all the upgrade. And I missed a nail here, six, one nail, six iron plates short. Um, and on the other hand, I was uh, two vine, six wooden planks, and one rope uh, over. Uh, I think I confused the wooden planks with the rebars, with the plates. No, that cannot happen. No. Anyway, so this works and it's fully upgraded now. Of course, you do want to have uh, it powered, uh, so you don't need to reload it. And that's how it lasts the whole night. Now, I have uh, broken up this in two parts. Um, the first is the battery, and it needs to be upgraded. It needs to be upgraded, because this thing here is going to consume over 600 power uh, when it's working fully. And the normal battery only uh, supports 500 uh, power. So if you use the normal battery, it's going to explode and you're going to have to repair it. Uh, and you may take damage, etc., etc. So this is what you need. Two batteries, five copper wire, one electric plate, five plastic, one plug, one pulse transformer, four rope, three rubber rings, 15 nails and seven iron plates plus anything that I got wrong, of course. Um, now, I do not need... Um, uh, yeah, the, the battery is not going to be here. I'm just going to place it for the sake of uh, showing everything. So I'm going to place the battery. So electricity comes battery here. And you see the max charge rate the power limit is 500 okay so power limit is 500 build it uh this output on this side input on this side and then upgrade it okay now it's gonna uh, uh, take care of everything and you see there is nothing left here so i use uh the exact number of materials i needed Finally, I uh, did not bring the things I'm going to need to wire it, but let's see. We are going to make, um, we are going to make uh, windmills to power the this thing. We're going to make five of them. Five of them is going to give us 125 power. The base consumes around 70, it, it consumes 71 power if I recall correctly. So three windmills will be enough, but windmills can get broken. So if you have five, you're guaranteed that it's pretty much guaranteed it's going to support the whole night. So five motors, 50 plastic, five plugs, 15 rubber rings, 25 nails, oh, i sorry, 75 nails, 50 iron plates, and 15 electric wires to wire everything up. So let's take this. Uh, we're going to make the windmills. We're gonna make the windmills. Let's just, uh, let's make it in this direction here. Uh, so it's here. Here. It's here. It's too close, actually. It's here. And then I cannot place it there. Big mistake on my part here. And in fact, this one's, these two are too close to the, to the thing there, so they are not working.
Okay. That was a mess. Now, everything that I have left is the wires. Okay, 15 wires. Uh, and I have to get the wiring thing, wiring two. Grab that. Probably inside my base. So let's wire this. So every one of the windmills is gonna go into the battery. Actually, I brought some cable here. I keep forgetting you can wire them from both in both directions. Like you can. I usually do output to input, but you can grab an input and go to the output, which saves a trip. Okay, so everything here is going. And then the best way to wire this is to uh, go from the traps least likely to be destroyed to the traps most likely to be destroyed. So I'm going to go here to the bridge. Uh, it's a non-damage trap, so zombies uh, are unlikely to hit it, and in fact they're unlikely to get here. Same thing for this one. And then here I usually like to go first uh, to the pendulum. Uh, the pendulum to the floor. From the floor to the pusher. Then floors again. Grab that floor. Here. Then wire the two shredders and chain. Yeah, and of course, because I wire them, I rotated them to place. And finally, to this guy here, which is a pretty yeah. okay. All traps are there. All traps are wired. You can see no wires left. And here, 70. Okay. Yeah, 71 for me because I have a switch in the middle, so I can turn it on and off. So 70 power. You only really need three. But then, then you got trouble. With the five, you're guaranteed to be okay. So get three with the upgraded battery, and then add the, the other two. And this is it. This, this would work. That's all all you need. Now, I'm gonna uh, remove these guys here. Um, I can keep the wire there for now. Okay, this is enough. Let me grab this guy here. Okay, so let's uh, talk about um, where you go from here. Um, I'm gonna show uh, what I have on my base. So on my base, I then put a stair so I can get on my corridor. And I have like four of these. Um, 
Well, I had three, now I have four. Going along the corridor so that uh, they can take the the work from one another, right? Uh, let's actually go here. Yeah, actually, no, I should have gone the, on the other side. So that's the corridor I have here. These are bridges uh, so they can like connect to each other without having pill needing pillars, though I do have a lot of pillars here. Now, that's another trap you have to make, the game asks you to make. Uh, that's the... Uh, it's going to be here now. It's going to be here. It's the bait trap. Now, the, the thing about the bait trap is that the zombies will go for it. Except that this bait trap is all surrounded by explosives, and I think the zombies will not actually go for it because I was here before, and there were zombies like i was here and zombies climbing up here and instead of going for the bait trap as they are supposed to do they went for me but that's one thing you can do like you um once you have the stairs here so you can be on a safer place you can place a bait trap uh, going in the other direction and then you can have, have like uh, uh the you can have a range trap such as the uh, spike launcher, which the game does ask you to do, uh, firing from this direction into that direction. So they come up here and instead of going for you, they go for the bait trap. And while they are attacking the bait trap, the spike thing is attacking them. Right. Other things I do. Um, other things I do. I have here a battery. Uh, this one is actually a bad example because I had to redo it and I was out of patience and I didn't redo it right. So this is a battery um, eliminator and I have 10 traps there, right? So I can connect each trap to an individual connection here. I don't because one of them is actually going all the way here. And uh, what I have is a switch. So that connector is coming here. You can see the connection is coming here. So it goes to the switch, which is a, a, a floor one. Uh, switches. Pressure switch. Goes here. Then from here, it goes here to this guy here. This guy here is the trap controller now what the trap controller does is you can select the kind of zombies it's going to attack so i leave light zombies off because light zombies don't need anything special to kill them i do have uh heavy zombies and giants so if the traps are having too much trouble uh the handling the zombies i can step here and then this thing here is going to power my flamethrower, which is going to attack the heavy zombies that are there, or the giant. Though flamethrower against giant, um, yeah, it's flamethrower is too slow for that. Uh, but there are other traps you could place there. Um, the risk is just damaging your, your own traps uh, with the heavier traps here. But you could have uh, the minigun turret is fine, but I don't like it. I think the flame floor is much more efficient. The minigun turret kills them faster, but the ammo for it is way more expensive for how much you use. Like I've, the the flame floors can hold 1,500 fuel, right? I have never reloaded them, and this is still about 1,300. And this is the one that gets attacked the most. Most zombies come from there and go here. So this is the one I use the most. And it's still about 1,300. Okay, so this is an example of uh, what you can do uh, in terms of long range traps and like activating them only at need. Uh, another thing I do is have lights. And lights do have to be repaired every time because they every time they take more than 50% damage. Okay. 
this time it did. Oh, but because it, it really divided uh, pretty well between the two, the two of them the last Horde Knight. So that one got attacked a lot. Um, so I have lights here in the middle. Uh, it provides a pretty good amount of light. And then here on the side, which gets basically all the rest. I don't have any light here because honestly, no zombies stay here. Um, it, it's a pendulum. Either it, they get pushed off or the pendulum kills them. So I don't place any lights there. And finally, yeah, you do want to have uh, redundancy. So as soon as you can, make two of them. So that if one of them, is something happens to one of them, you forgot to repair something, for example, you can just, um, the other one will take the load and they they handle they handle everything so um yeah that's pretty much all the tips i have um this is gonna be all 